mention this because being an alpha male is a multi is multifactorial in nature. So there's many factors that determine what an alpha male is. Uh, the phrase alpha male was coined by folks involved in the field of ethology, a 25 cent word used to describe the objective study of animal behavior. Here we're talking about researchers who spent years observing uh, how various kinds of animals interact with one another in the natural environment. We get the term alpha from the Greeks. Um, and then he, he talks about uh, the certain animals. They noticed that certain animals would take would, would exhibit certain behaviors. Certain animals would, you know, be the dominant ones. They'd be the ones out front. They'd be the ones that the females would want to mate with. They'd be the ones that, you know, jumped out and, and jumped into the fight first, you know, things like that. And, uh, and so it led them to really become fascinated with the idea of, you know, what is an alpha and how does that work? And remember, human beings are mammals, right? So uh, actually, according to Professor Ken Sapolsky at Stanford University, um, the, the human brain is about 95% the same as an animal brain. Uh, he does really good, really fascinating lectures on, on the Internet about um, how he, he, he teaches he teach at Stanford University. Uh, and he's a uh, not a biologist. I forgot what he is exactly what his exact field is. But but he um, but he does these really interesting lectures where he compares the human brain to the animal brain and how humans react to situations in animals. Even though we think that we're very different from animals, we have a lot of animal traits inside of us. The, there's only five percent of our brain, the prefrontal cortex, that distinguishes us from animals. The other 95 percent is pretty much the same. Um, so here are the, the, the characteristics he lists for alpha males, and I'll go into them in detail. Assertiveness, dominance, natural leadership skills, a protective instinct, courageous, physically strong, and curious. Assertiveness, dominance, natural leadership skills, protective instincts, courageous, physically strong and curious. So uh, what, what he's been, and what he also says is really interesting is that a lot of these traits are traits that some of them are inherent. Some of them are just, so sometimes you bo you're born as an alpha. Um, and, but then what he also says though, is that a lot of these traits um, can be developed and nurtured in men, or they can be suppressed in men. So that's why terms like toxic masculinity are very dangerous if they are applied in the wrong way. You know, if you have a boy that's raised, let's say, in a very feminized environment, let's say he has no, you know, male role models who can really teach him what it means to harness his strength and use it in an appropriate way, then he can either get the wrong interpretation of what it means to be an alpha, which, you know, which means like maybe imitating his favorite rapper or whatever, or he might think that his natural male instincts are bad and suppress them. And which literally will change the, 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 the physical and chemical composition of his body. It changes who he is. You know, he, he's producing less testosterone and he's estrogenized and, 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 and he can be feminized. Right. And, uh, and, and in fact, when you go back, if, uh, pay attention to the public school. It happens to your son when he goes to public school, when that white female teacher has her image of the way of, she believes a man's supposed to behave, which a lot of times is built on white feminism, things like that. So when she sees your son, she's already got that natural instinctual fear of him because studies show that when people see an image of a black man, their their um, uh, adrenaline jumps. They get very scared. So she's already w afraid of him. And she also has a misinterpretation of his behavior based on uh, the fact that she has an idea of how she believes he's supposed to behave. Right. So when a white woman is telling a black boy. What it means to be appropriate that's usually going to end up all kinds of wrong and all kinds of backward. Yes or no? Tell me if you've seen this. <coughs> yes or no? Tell me if you, somebody talk black to me, tell me if you're relating to what I'm saying, if you understand, if you've seen it, because I need you to visualize times where you've seen it so you can understand where I'm going with this. Yes or no? Has anybody else seen this in the, in the public school system? Do you, Yes or no? Do you understand how this relates to the fact that black boys are, um, are actually <coughs> put in detention more than other children? Yes or no? Do you do you understand the linkage between black boys being more likely to be put in detention and black men being more likely to be put in, in the penitentiary? The penitentiary ain't nothing but detention for grownups and detention ain't nothing but the penitentiary for children. That's pretty much what it is. It's, it, you know, a lot of the public schools for the black male because of the misinterpretation of, of, male, of black maleness and the uh, the natural instinctive uh, fear 
and concern about allowing black maleness to develop itself uh, you know, leads them at an early age to uh, try to, you know, marginalize, control, and tame that child like he's an animal. And this undermines his natural development into the kind of alpha males that the black community needs. That's why, that's why when I tell you guys about the black core of three, there's a reason why the first part of the black core of three that we believe in is that black people can and should educate our own children. Because then what happens is you can see these characteristics coming out in your young men and you know how to nurture that. You know when to say, whoa, 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 you're going too far. But you also know when to say, OK, go ahead, do your thing. You know, do your best. You know, just make sure you read a book before you go do that. You know, or or hey, here's another way you might want to handle it strategically. Right. Uh, you know, but a white female teacher at school can't do that. I, I spoke at a, at, a, at a middle school one time and um, and it was this middle school in the hood. The school was 90 percent black and Hispanic. And uh, every single teacher in that middle school was white, every, a white woman, literally every single teacher. I actually, for the seventh, it was the seventh grade. I spoke to the kids in the seventh grade and they had me talk to the kids that were in their special education group. And they were mostly black and brown boys uh, as expected. And they could they felt like they couldn't control the boys. And I remember they were really fascinated by the fact that I was able to control them like that because I, I knew these kids in my mind. I already knew kids like this, so it was easy to talk to them about whatever I wanted to talk to them because they could relate to me. And I remember the the, the white females were like, she, she, one of them was like, um, so Dr. Watkins, what do you think about our school? You know, give us your, your honest opinion. I said, well, to be honest, your school, you know, <clears throat> it's, uh, it, it's, uh, it's like a mixture between a penitentiary and an insane asylum. And um, this is why I don't get invited to speak in public schools because I say shit like that, I, I tell the truth. Um, I don't even want to go to these schools because it, it, it makes me want to vomit. Um, and then uh, and then the other thing they, they said was they said, well, you know, in case you haven't noticed, Dr. Watkins, we're, we're just all we're all white women. And I say, yeah, I, I did notice that. And uh, and she says, she says, so we don't know what to do. And I say, yeah, you, because your school, your school system doesn't want these boys to reach their potential. That's why you, they, that's why you don't have black males up in here uh, talking to them. That's why black men like me don't typically get invited to come speak to these kids at the schools, because you're, you're this is not this. The, Public schools, let me just say this, pay attention now. Public schools are not educational facilities for black men. Public schools are fucking zoos. The public school is a zoo for the black male. The pub, for the black male, the public school is a zoo that in a zoo is designed to, uh, to uh, engage the animal and to train the animal and to tame the animal. And at best, the animal in the zoo is being prepared for the circus. The circus is when he's grow, he's raised to be some rapper with, you know, diamonds and, and gold in his, in his mouth and chains hanging down and tattoos all over his body, th thugging out for white people, promoting black genocide around the world. That's the circus. They like that. They like it when the black man acts thugged out and all that. Or the other part of the circus is preparing the black man to show his athletic prowess uh, in, in a very controlled setting, like, like, a, like a tiger or an elephant that can stand on one foot. Uh, and, and like an NBA game or NFL game, you know, when they when they bring up, they put him out and they parade him in front of, you know, masses full of masses of white people who are astonished and they, they marvel at the athletic prowess of this big animal. Right. Just like just like showing them King Kong when King Kong. Remember the movie King Kong when they put King Kong out there in front of in front of uh, in, in front of all those white people. And they were like, oh, my God, they're like the king of the jungle. And they're, they're, and they're scared. They're like, ah. They're scared, but then they're fascinated, right? Like they're, they're scared, but they all paid money to see this, right? And so let me show you, uh, and you probably remember this uh, picture. You probably remember this picture. And this picture didn't come out of thin air. Like this was not a, a, a an image that just, you know, like just popped up. This comes from racial history. Remember this image of LeBron James where he, uh, LeBron's a good dude. I like LeBron. So this is, this is not anti-LeBron. This is anti-white supremacy. But remember that cover of Vogue? Where they had the image of, but now remember, Vogue is the magazine, the same magazine that's going to celebrate the gay man too. They're going to celebrate the the man who dressed like Cleopatra. They're going to have him all over. He, he'll probably make the cover for this. But they had him uh, doing King Kong, where he's holding the blonde white girl, and instead of like holding a club like a gorilla, he's holding, he's, he's got a basketball, right? You, anybody remember that image where they had LeBron uh, instead of being King James, he's King Kong, and that was not coincidental that was not them just being cute that was a very accurate portrayal of how they viewed the black man the black man to 
uh, in a white supremacist society is viewed as an animal. And with an animal, you either uh, domesticate the animal so you can train him and ride him like a horse or show him off like a prized elephant or gorilla, or you keep his ass in the cage, which is what the penitentiaries are or the detentions in public schools or, or just marginalize a black man. And if, if, that, if, if one of those two options don't work, where you either uh, show them off at the circus and make money that way, or you keep them in the cage in the zoo and make money off them that way, because they make black they make money off the black men who play the sports, they make the money off the black men that are in the prisons, right? So you make money off the animals that are being paraded in the circus, or you make money off the animals that are being paraded in the zoo, right? Do you follow me? Yes or no? Are you following what I'm saying here? And then what do you do? What happens then if you can't parade him at the circus or keep him in the cage? Well, not well. Two things. One of two things will happen with the animal. You either release him into the wild, right, where he's just he just goes off and does whatever. Those are the brothers that are just sitting on the corner chilling or or just out doing whatever. That ain't really got much going on. They ain't got jobs. They just kind of out here. Or you kill his ass, right? The minute he becomes a threat, you kill him, right? You know. And so effectively, the black man is controlled like an animal. So 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 all of this links back to alpha maleness. If you ever want to see the biggest group of alpha males together, go to uh, the penitentiary. Go to the penitentiary and you will see a lot of black men that are uh, that are smart, that are natural leaders, that are very courageous, um, you know, and, and they were courageous enough maybe to stand up to the white man and the, or the white man shot him or, or locked him up or whatever. Uh, you'll see a lot of alpha males in prison. So this is warfare. In warfare, that's what you do. In a war, you don't really go and you don't worry so much about the little wimpy ass men that, that aren't going to be a threat. You go after the alphas. You kill the alphas off. You get rid of the alphas. You either lock them up or you use them. So anyway, let, let's let's keep going. Do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't hit the thumbs up button, please do that. Also, uh, if you uh, want to um, uh, ever uh, advertise on this platform, feel free to go to drvoiceadvertising.com. That's drvoiceadvertising.com. You can sponsor a podcast. But uh, but you got to, you know, if you fill out the information, uh, you know, there's a low fee, but you got to pay the fee if you want to sponsor the podcast. So we don't really have a staff and all that stuff. I just offer it as a service for anybody that wants to sponsor the podcast because you guys were asking about that. Um, also, don't forget we're on iTunes. So uh, if you uh, want to listen to this podcast on your way to work or something like that, you can go to iTunes and look up my name. And also, don't forget, if you want to join our organization for black men, you can go to blackmenunited.net. That's blackmenunited.net. All right.